the move. Powered by Blinder's C32 twin engines at 24 knots. 30 nautical miles to the edge of the Coral Sea to check out a reef rocked by a recent earthquake. All right, it's game on. We've anchored inside protected Gary's Lagoon. Perfect for new divers like me. Nervous and need of a refresher from my much more experienced mates. It is a, roughly the size of an Olympic sized swimming pool with a maximum depth of 14 meters. Watch where you put your hands. Don't put your hands anywhere that you're not actually looking. Which is why I'm going camo. Dressed like a blue line surgeon fish, so the fish think I'm one of them. Can you make sure this thing's working? Sadie's taken over as captain, and as the sky turns ominous, we jump in the dinghy. Bye, Sadie. Adios, amigos. And zip over to Bait Reef. We descend 100 feet down to a huge coral garden, now officially inside one of the seven natural wonders of the world. The Great Barrier Reef is home to 600 types of coral, essential to our ecosystem for protecting our coastline, food, and new medicine to treat cancer, other diseases, and researchers hope one day AIDS. And 1,500 kinds of fish, which is 10% of all known species of fish, including some of the most dangerous on the planet. Nemo here and his family of anemone fish are of course harmless and popular residents on the reef. Through my foggy mask, I spot this little guy scooting along on the purple honeycomb coral. I later learned he's a pipefish related to the seahorse and named for a similar vacuum snout. These giant caterpillar-like creatures are sea cucumbers. They can grow to 10 feet, be used as an aphrodisiac, a delicacy in Asia, and powerful in helping high blood pressure, arthritis, and anti-aging. My dive buddy Christiana is a marine biologist and points out coral uprooted by a recent earthquake. Environmental damage, including climate change, pollution, and coral bleaching, has killed more than half of the coral on the reef since 1985. Most evident up north, where the water is warmer. That I'm looking forward to. It's about 68 degrees Fahrenheit here, and even through several layers, I'm freezing. But it's worth bearing to experience this wonder down under. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh, that service. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out this place from the sky. We're about to fly over Heart Reef. It's part of Hardy Reef, and the coral is actually naturally shaped like a heart. just a very small fraction of what makes up the Great Barrier Reef. It stretches over 1,500 miles. Wow. We've got a heart shaped reef just coming up here. It's upside down as we come around. Oh, I see it! You've Look at it? it is, yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Wow. It is a lot smaller than I thought. Yeah, it's not very big, but it's heart shaped oh, nonetheless. It's, yeah, it's so special. That's incredible. Romantic. You see it on the postcards, you see it on the t-shirts, and then we're finally seeing it in real life. Awesome. Enamored by the reef, we head back through the Whitsunday Islands, and on the way, hear of a half-sunken ship off Airlie Beach. That is so cool. So the story with this boat goes that it was tied up to the jetty, it sank, and then the owner refloated it, and then a huge northerly storm blew it, and then another storm blew it again, and now it's stuck here at Cannonville Beach. But it's obviously a pretty sweet place to explore. I feel like I just stepped into the Goonies adventure. One-Eyed Willie, are you in there? Come on, Sadie. Here too. All right, there's only one proper way off a pirate ship. Sadie, let's go.